So um, the thing that I didn't do is anchor my springs to their location, their original location. So I'm going to um, turn off some of the previews here, right? Um, I'll take my division points, turn the preview off here. My offset points, I'll turn the preview off there. So now I'm just going to see my particles. And hopefully if I have this uh, working correctly, um, they will bounce based on trying to find a rest length of 12. So what I need to do is I need to find the things that I want to determine my anchor point as my anchor points. And that's going to be my original division points. So I'm going to come from division points here on the left all the way into anchor points here on uh, my physics engine object. All right, now it's red. Why is it red? Because the initial condition of my simulation has changed. So therefore, I have to reset it in order for it to actually uh, start calculating again, right? So what can change while we're working with, um, with Kangaroo? Well, a few things, but nothing that changes the relationships that are at the beginning. Um, so we'll see this in a second. There, um, the rest length object slider here can change while it's running because that's not changing how things are connected or how they're being defined, just the property of what we have already. Okay, so let's uh, reset our simulation. Um, I'll hit false. I'll release it, and you'll see they bounce into their rest position. Despite the fact that the masses are different, right, the spring wants to be 12 units long. So they're going to be roughly 12 units long, or really close to 12 units long, at each point. All right, so the last thing that we want to do here is just really based on preview so that we can see what we have as a spring as the simulation is running. In order to do so, we need to use the geometry input that's located here. So I'm going to reset my simulation and block my timers so that we can make a modification. And before I simulate, I need to take um, the objects that represent my springs and bring them through the geometry input. Now let's go ahead and see if it will take a line and uh, update successfully. All right, so if I just put the lines in directly from spring connections into geometry, right, it's able to transform those lines so that I can see the results. All right. So, um, this is kind of the conclusion of this exercise, uh, but before we go any further, let's say that we want to change how quickly the solution is achieved once the simulation starts. It goes pretty quick. Let's say I want to slow that down. There are two options for what I can do. If you have a suggestion on how I might change my definition so that the simulation progresses a little bit more slowly, go ahead and drop them into the questions window and we'll survey the group. All right. Just about everyone answered this question and um, absolutely correctly. All right, so if I um, block my timers, one option that was suggested is that I can change the interval of my timer from 20 milliseconds to something that is longer, like one second or whatever value I want to choose. So if I release my timer, you'll see that it goes update, 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 update. Almost there. Pretty close. All right. So it's taking about 20 steps to calculate, let's say. All right, the alternative option is to, um, is to change the settings that we were working with, uh, that we're leaving as default here under the uh, last input for Kangaroo. So we can use the settings object as I showed before from Kangaroo, um, Kangaroo settings, or you can also right click and manage the Kangaroo options collection. 
And this allow, brings up another window that allows us to select the current Kangaroo options and change some of the properties. Here's the um, option that I was mentioning earlier, the sub iterations. So if I didn't want to change my timer, but I wanted it to extend longer in terms of how fast it found the solution, I could reduce this down to, let's say, two. If I hit OK, and I leave my timer at its original 20 milliseconds, right, that's, that slows it down as well. All right, so in working with the time, those are my two options, changing the interval of the timer or the sub iterations within the kangaroo settings. All right. There were a couple of other suggestions that are uh, almost correct. Uh, one was change the unary force, make it less or more. And what that's going to do is just apply more force to the object so it will either fall farther or not as fall, far. But how fast it finds its solution shouldn't change much or at least not in a noticeable fashion if we're just changing the unary force. And because mass is um, directly proportional to that, that would also be the same condition. It might change just slightly, but that's not going to really affect how the simulation looks. All right, so those are also really great suggestions. Um, give us a good opportunity to talk about what those changes might produce in terms of our simulation. And um, at this point, we are finished with the 1-1 exercise. So let's hang out here for one second and um, uh, take any questions that you might have about springs. And if you um, want to take an opportunity to, um, to change the file or update it just a little bit, go ahead and look at how you might um, visualize what's happening a little bit um, in a more interesting way, let's say, than just points and lines. I'll give you a hint. Um, you can use some custom previews here under vector color and maybe even throw in an object to make our particles look a little bit bigger, right? something like a mesh sphere. All right, so um, All right, we have one question, which is, how can you use a surface as an input to your simulation instead of a point? And um, that's uh, a good question. We're actually going to be getting there in some of the later exercises, so we'll hold off on that one. All right, and then there was um, another question about the changing the springs, right? So now what we're getting as a result, even though the masses are changing, the springs are um, kind of equaling out all that difference. So if you wanted to uh, change the springs so that they don't all end at um, 12 units long, you can um, use a similar strategy. Take a panel and a repeat, and you can use that to vary the rest length uh, on each of the springs so that it will change not across all of them at the same time, but around each one. All right, and then there was one uh, question that was um, about the specificity of using the equation A equals FM. All right, so um, this would be something that uh, we should verify through the uh, kangaroo group um, on Food for Rhino or, or Grasshopper, uh, the Grasshopper Forum, exactly what um, units and um, according force values are being produced. Now, it's my understanding that I'm in meters, um, so the value negative 9.8 is the value for gravity. So I think that this should make a mass of one unit, which um, again, I'm guessing maybe it's grams or kilograms, uh, should move under the weight of gravity if my settings are uh, as such. Uh, but that's definitely um, something that is a great question for um, the kangaroo group, and we'll talk about the kangaroo group here um, in a little bit. Okay, 
Um, those are all really great questions. Um, let's move on to the next exercise. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my... All right, I, I see there's one other note asking about the rest length and properties of the springs. All right, so um, again, to recap the spring object, it's asking for the connection, which is the line that defines the spring. So I'll turn preview off here so we can see those. All right, that's the connection uh, that, the, that defines the spring. Stiffness and damping are two um, relatively easy to use uh, variables that would change the behavior of the spring. And specifically, rest length is the one that we've been focusing on, which says how long should the spring want to be? So if we have this condition here, right, uh, this is one unit, but the rest length is 12. This is going to equate to uh, this diagram, the rest length being 12, but we've compressed our spring down to one unit, right? So the first thing that's going to happen on the very first step of the simulation is that the spring is going to shoot this way to the right because it's been compressed down to one unit and its rest length is 12. All right, and again, if you wanted to vary the rest lengths, you could use a similar uh, strategy as we did up here with the mass values. Um, I could just copy and paste this using the lines to determine how many values I want to keep and maybe multiply these factors times my initial 12. So 12 times these. And let's see what that does to my springs. Right. So again, the only thing I'm changing is each one's rest length. So it wants to be longer or shorter based on this value. And again, while the simulation's running, I can change the rest length multiplier and have the simulation update live. All right, so these were my rest length values. Okay, great. So let's save that and close it. And let's move on to our next exercise.